On today's episode of the Cryptoverse, we're going to look at a Bitcoin reversal pattern that has broken, meaning the Bitcoin reversal has been aborted. And then we'll also look at why and when Bitcoin may moon. In addition to that, we'll have a look at Steam today because it has absolutely mooned itself, up 88% by the US dollar and 87% by uh, Bitcoin. So we'll take a look at that on today's episode of the Cryptoverse. So stay right there. Hi there guys, welcome to the latest episode of the Cryptoverse, your regular dose of news and commentary on Bitcoin, cryptocurrencies and blockchains. I'm your host, Chris Coney. Nice and focused today, we're going to look at price action on Bitcoin. So let's take a look here. First of all, the reversal pattern that I talked about. So this is a head and shoulders pattern that was forming and has been broken at the last minute. So here we go, nice and clean on the old chart right now. This is Bitcoin against US dollar coming from Bitfinex. And we use Coinigy, we're going to use the arrow tool here. We're going to take a low here from the first run up and we're going to draw this beginning of the shoulder. We're going to get another arrow and we're going to draw it the full part of the first shoulder, which we'll call the left shoulder. Then we'll go for the neck. So we'll join that up to this high right here. So here we have left shoulder and neck and all up to the head. And then from the top of the head down to the bottom of the right shoulder. And then we'll do bottom of the right shoulder up to top of the right shoulder. And then ordinarily what we do is we would for form the right shoulder completely. It would break the neck as it's called. It would go below the neck of the head and shoulder pattern and that would complete the pattern and be categorically a reversal. However, what we did was, let's just draw the rest of this. This next move down only went down this far. So it set a higher low. So you need to set a lower, another lower low. So you go one, two, three, break the neck and then down we go, right? So let's get the horizontal line tool out here and let's draw it where the neck needed to break, which was about here. So yeah, I'll draw that in, in red because that would be bad, right? And you can see we stopped short of it. We stopped quite short of it actually. Now, if we draw another horizontal line where we stopped, so there, let's make that white. There it is. So that's where we stopped. That's where we were going to get to. So this was the margin of error. We were saved from completing the reversal pattern by this much. This is a good thing. The fact that it set a higher low means that that's a bullish signal. You know, all of this was a reversal pattern. It was a bearish signal. Price going up. Reversal pattern means then going down in the downtrend. Didn't end up happening, right? So good news. So if that's when crash, well, when moon. So let's move on to that. Let's wipe all this out completely and let's load up one of my templates here because I'm going to load my regular analysis now so we can see what's going on with that. So here's the chart I look at most of the time. This is where most of my indicators and analysis is saved. So let me kind of narrate this to you. So I've got this on a clean chart, right? I haven't got any of my volume or my RSI on. You just double click the coin G chart to get rid of that. So you know, we just drew that head and shoulders pattern, which you can still see here. It's there, it's there, it's there. And the point where the the right shoulder didn't break the neck, you'll also see that if we can thicken this trend line up a bit, I'll just thicken up for the sake of demonstration. So that great big white thick line there, that's like the uptrend line. It starts back here at the beginning of where the head and shoulders pattern began. There's a second touch on it here around the 22nd of December. And then there's a third touch, which is the right shoulder that didn't break at the 30th of December as well. Three touches on the trend line, so that's coming up and supporting the price. So this point here, the 30th of December, not only is this trend line supporting the price, but also that is the higher low that destroyed the head and shoulder pattern from completing, at least in a perfectly clean manner anyway. So that's that bounce. You've also got, let me get rid of, let me re-thin this line out once again. So, you know, I'm not talking about it. This red moving line here, this is the 50 day exponential moving average. You've also got, if I zoom into this a little bit to make it clearer, you've also got support there. So look at all these tails. Every time the price tries to go below the 50 day moving average, it bounces right back up again. And here it did actually close below and then go even further down, but trend line supported it. And then it wasn't long before the price went right back up above the 50 day moving average again. 
And then today and yesterday, still, the lows of the day are right on the 50-day moving average. So providing excellent support there at the bottom of this uh, head and shoulders pattern, which is it's just not going to complete looking at this. There are just too many signals to say that that second shoulder isn't going to form and break the neck, right? So there's lots of, lots of evidence to suggest that this reversal pattern has well and truly broken and will not continue. In addition to that, right? If we zoom out a little bit further, let's just put the auto zoom back on real quick so we can get the proportions back here. So my colored zones, these are my Fibonacci retracement lines. And this one here, this green one that goes right across here, this is the 50% Fibonacci retracement line. And it's based on the same data as the head and shoulders pattern, right? You see it starts down here, which is where my head and shoulders pattern started. It goes right up to the all-time high of 20,000. That's where my head was of the head and shoulders. This is the very top of the head. And then we have the retracement lines to say like when the price pulls back, how much of that price action has been, you know, retraced, reclaimed, deleted, whatever you want to call it, right? So this 50% level, which is around $1,266, this was why I bought in at 12,500 because I thought that was pretty good as a point. Granted, when I did buy that back here, it did go a lot lower than that. It went down to 10,500. However, I'm not looking for the bottom. I'm looking for a decent entry point. Anyway, the point I'm making here is that this is also another uh, coincidence, coincidental point of support. If you didn't have the 50-day exponential moving average there showing that the price had been supported, 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 you could also use this 50% FIB level because same, same thing again. Uh, if I just drew a great big thick horizontal line where that is, right? So I would hit that and then let's put it on real thick and let's put it on solid line. So there, look, that, that's where the 50% Fibonacci retracement level is and it's same again with the 50-day moving average every time the tails of the candles the lows of the day try to go below this level which is around about what let's call it 1250 because that's that's um the zone that I'm talking about here there isn't absolute precision in this kind of thing because prices differ across exchanges and and all the rest of it so the 1250 zone is what I'm looking at technically from the fib levels it's 1266 uh, sorry, 12,662 to be exact, if you want precise numbers, but I don't tend to think in those terms. I'm just looking for air zones. The reason this is also significant is back here, look, when it broke this level of the 1250 area, that's when it took off to 20,000. So that was a key level historically. So now we look back here and we see it's acting as very good support, right? So that's the Fibonacci levels are also on our side. So let's get rid of this horizontal line. Now we're finished talking about that. So in terms of when moon, um, well, now we've got some decent support. We can begin moving upwards. A key level to break in order to return to 20,000, in my view, is this level, the 23.6% Fibonacci retracement level. And that is around 16,500. So again, if I draw this in, pop that right there. And with Coinergy, you can actually change the coordinates and put in 16,500 exactly, and it'll put it right back where it's supposed to be. Just click the lock button so I don't mess it, mess it up now. And here we go. So you see here, this is on the 27th of December. We had a, a run up to back up to 16,000 after we broke it and it bounced off and then went back down to about 12,000 ish, 12,500, which is the level we've been talking about. Again, if you look at this horizontal white line here, the, the first time it ran up to that, right, when we, we hadn't been at 16 and a half thousand back here when um, it was the 7th of December, right? And look at, look at how little price action went above the 16 and a half thousand level there was a bit right an attempt it failed came back right down to 12 and a half thousand again surprise surprise then went up and tried again and again and again and only when this day the 15th of december made a confident break not only through the 16 and a half thousand level but it also broke the previous all-time high back here from the 12th of the 12th so if i put my little dotted cross here there you can see what i mean and then the previous day, it confirmed it, and then it ran right up to 20,000 and then bounced off. The point I'm making there is that there was a, this is a very significant level, 16,500, according to my analysis here. Because, of course, again, when it came back down and it broke it to the downside, boom, it straight away crashed all the way down here to a low of 10,700. So, again, all this is telling me that 16,500 is a key level to watch. It also coincides with this. The final point I want to make here is there's this sort of downtrending line that I've drawn forming this, this um, what do you call this, a wedge pennant, whatever you want to call it. This is more like a wedge. It's not a symmetrical one, but it is a wedge nonetheless. So I've joined up this high at 20,000 with this high here so that we get a, a downtrending line to see the price being pinched. So this wedge is forming, right? 
And uh, the second point of touch there was on 16,500. Would you believe it? Now, that would pinch the price ordinarily, but as we've just been speaking about for the last few minutes, in all this, right, there's bulls pushing the price up to break the wedge to the upside, and there's a few bears pushing it to break it to the downside. However, all things considered, I am pretty confident that the bulls are way, way outnumbering the bears here. They seem to have a much stronger position, much more evidence is on the side of the bulls. So this little wimpy downtrend line here, like it's just for decoration really. It's, uh, it's only got two touches on it and I do not have any confidence in it preventing the price from going up. So I expect it to just completely ignore that and then run back up to 16,500. This is where the game is needs to be won. If we bust 16,500, then I don't see any reason why we wouldn't then make a quick move back to 20,000. And if we break that, that's it. All bets are off. We're in uncharted territory once again, and we're at all-time highs, and who knows where it will go from there. So that's my Bitcoin price analysis for the day. The only other thing I want to talk about today is Steam. Look at Steam. Oh my goodness me. Steam to the absolute moon. $5.95 per Steam. Coin to coin market cap at this moment in time. That's an 88.68% gain on the day. That is fantastic. It's fantastic for me because I'm a big fan of Steam. I always talk about it. So one of your favorite coins when it moons, you kind of feel have some happy time. Also, if you want the price in Satoshis, it's 43,457 Satoshis, which represents a slightly smaller gain by percentages. It's 70, sorry, 87.95% in terms of Bitcoin gains against Steam rather than US dollar gains. We can have a quick look at the Steam chart if you want. On, on uh, what's this? It says Bittrex working right now. It's gone slightly down from that coin market cap figure. 43,052 Satoshis. And we actually had a high right here of 52,000 Satoshis. And obviously some pullback happened there. Look at the volume on Steam, right? It's suddenly taken off since, um, what's this? Actually, I'm looking at the hourly chart here. So it's it took off right about huh would you believe it or not midnight on new year's day so it's kind of strange isn't it what a coincidence that is you look at the um let's look back at yeah the 31st of december this is new year's eve 10 p.m 11 p.m all flat 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 21,000 satoshis trading price and then when it clicks over to 2018 volume starts picking up and by 12 hours into the new year uh, noon on New Year's Day, bosh, the volume starts running in and away we go. And it runs up within a day from uh, the 12, so the 24,000 Satoshi level right up to 52,000. So that is more than a doubling of the price in Bitcoin terms. Absolutely superb. Now we can draw some Fibonacci retracement lines on here as well. If we pull out the, where's the Fib retracement? There it is. So let's do it. Let's do the, the 2018 view on this. So if we go right back to the beginning of the year, this is just for fun. Pop the low there, pop the high right up there at 52,000 Satoshis. We can see what might happen going forward here. Let's see. So we've already pulled down below the first Fibonacci level, which is at 44,557. And then the next line of support, if this holds, will be about 40,000. So there's a lot of people going for a bit of selling right now. The biggest volume, though, look, is on the upward move, and uh, there's less confidence in the selling, according to the volume right there. Also, if we turn on the exponential moving averages, if I pull up my template analysis again, which will load all my regular indicators, if I go back to Bittrex, Steam against the US dollar, and uh, this is actually on the daily chart now. It looks way different on the daily chart, doesn't it? On the daily chart, we've got... Um, we've got sort of... We had a dead cross back here, where the 50-day was below the 200-day, and it's still there. So despite this big moon, it's still quite down. And, and you look at the the chart trend overall, Steam against Bitcoin, it's been downtrending for a while. Bitcoin's been flat. So of course, when Steam moons relative to Bitcoin, it's uh, gone a little bit mental there. That FIB level needs to be deleted because that's way out of date. But in any case, this is what it looks like on the daily chart. And it's just pulled above both of its moving averages for the first time in a while. So that's my view on that one. What I'll be looking for next, you see the 50 days coming up. I want to see a golden cross where the 50 day keeps pulling up and comes above the 200 day. That would be well and truly in um, bull territory. But of course, because Bitcoin's price isn't stable either, if suddenly there's a lot of demand for Bitcoin, that will push the steam price down relative to Bitcoin, if you know what I'm saying. Now, there is 
a an explanation for why Steam would moon like this in particular, and it's because this is my Steam account, right? In Steam, because it's a social networking platform, the way you gain influence on the Steam platform is by staking your coins, right? So you got Steam, this is liquid Steam that you can just move in and out and trade it and yada yada, or sell it, buy it, whatever you want to do with it. But if you want greater influence on the platform, you power it up. So it says here, Steam Power. So it's the same thing. Steam and Steam Power is the same thing. The only difference is that Steam Power is Steam that you have locked away. You have staked it in your account. So I've staked all of my Steam, like 12,000 odd Steam. Um, and then you, it's, it's staked, it's locked up. So you can't sell it instantaneously. If you want to get this out, you have to power it down. And that then starts gradually releasing the Steam back into its liquid form over the course of three months, I think it is, right? Now, why is that significant? Well, it's because in a situation like this, where the Steam price goes bonkers and goes to like $6, if I wanted to then sell all of my Steam, I can't. I can't do that in an instant, right? So that avoids a massive amount of panic selling or a lot of profit taking, especially for people who have pledged their loyalty to the Steam platform long term. By staking your Steam, you are saying that, look, I, I realize the price may moon massively, and I'm sort of surrendering my rights to instantly sell my Steam. And of course, the benefit of staking is that you get greater influence on the platform. So this is a declaration that you are in the Steam for the long term because you are locking it away and knowing full well, like today, if it goes to $6, then you can't just in instantly sell all of those coins, right? And because a lot of people do this, that's a lot of Steam locked up and there's a lot of people that just can't sell their Steam, right? <clears throat> and that prevents the price from crashing down very hard after a big moon like this, right? There'll still be a whole bunch of people that have liquid Steam on the exchanges and can sell it instantaneously. However, all those, you know, holders that uh, even Bitcoin holders can suddenly sell it if they want to. There's nothing preventing them from turning from a hodler to a uh, seller, a folder, fodler in any moment. Whereas in Steam, if you've powered it up, you just can't change your mind in an instant, right? And also, I think it may be it may be trading activity that's caused Steam to moon, but I keep talking about this. Steam has one of the best fundamentals and best utility in the whole space. Back to blocktivity, if you've not heard me bang on about this enough, this is the measure of blockchain value by actual usage. And in that regard, Steam is the undisputed king. It's the most used blockchain by a number of transactions because it's a social networking platform, right? The transactions are free, and most people who use Steam don't actually know they're using a cryptocurrency or a blockchain. If you never told someone that it was a blockchain or a social network, they would just think it was one of the best social networks out there because it pays you to use it, right? So you can see here, the average the average over the last seven days, Steam has done 1.34 million transactions per day. Absolutely stonking, and also when you look at the total, uh, how much it's it's straining the Steam network, that represents less than 0.1% or just over 0.1% of its total processing capacity, which is enormous. It just absolutely destroys any other blockchain. And this is actual usage, right? This is people posting stuff on the Steam blockchain because it's a social network and people are actually using it, right? So that's why I think Steam has one of the best fundamentals out there. So there we go. That's a bit of background analysis to Steam. Okay, I think that is actually all I've got for you today. So... Thank you very much for joining me today, guys. If you like this episode, go ahead and hit that like button. And if you're new around here, get subscribed. And if you would like access to my very best material, such as my structured online courses, then go to my website, cryptoversity.com, click on courses and check out any one of these courses that I've made for your educational delight. Also, follow me on Steam, because if you follow me on Steam, you can get some monetary rewards for your best comments. For example, this is my post from yesterday where I did the 2017 year in review. So far I've got six comments and one fellow in particular or man, lady, woman, whatever, this monetary few gave me this great link to a tool called Steam Spectacles. That was very useful. So if I upvote them, see what happens to their rewards. It goes from four cents and they're going to get pumped up to the top. You say, see, I've just upvoted their comment because it was a good comment. And now they're going to earn $2.93 for that comment because of my powerful upvote. So if you want to contribute to the discussion and then similar rewards, come and follow me on the Steam It platform and then make a good comment and maybe I'll upvote you as well. All right, guys, that's all for today. I'll be back tomorrow with another episode of the Cryptoverse. So until then, it's me, Chris Coney, saying bye for now.